Okay, good morning. What I'm gonna do in today's video is give you guys a quick basic measurement using 971 and in particular measuring audio booths in one octave bands. So I'm gonna run you through the calibration, the measurement setup. We're gonna save that measurement to our PC so we can always reload it onto a new device and then also downloading the data and exporting to Excel. So first things first, Sfan 971 to turn it on, shift and start button. It's gonna go through its internal warm-up menu. Only takes a couple of seconds. And then I'm gonna run you through some setups. Okay, once that's done, we come to the default display. To get into the menu, we go shift and menu. And we're just gonna to scroll to the bottom quickly down to instrument and press enter. And we're gonna to go to user interface and press enter. We're gonna change this to advanced. Typically, if we calibrate it, we'll change that for you or you've purchased it, but it's just one little setting that you'll need to do. So we're gonna press escape and we're gonna go back to the menu up to the top to the function. We're gonna press enter and we're gonna to go to measurement function. Now we're measuring one octave bands for this particular audio booth measurement. So we're gonna press the right arrow and press enter. After that, we're gonna go down to calibration and we're gonna go down to auto cal and we're gonna make sure that's switched on. So it's gonna save us a bit of time. Basically, once we pop the calibrator on, the instrument's gonna register that there is a signal and then that data will be translated into the header info at the end. So what we're gonna do is pop the acoustic calibrator on, select your level 114, and this is gonna pop up an automatic calibration. So as you can see, there's a countdown delay of two seconds. It's gonna go through its internal, internal calibration. And once that's done, we're gonna press enter to save. So, we're gonna remove this and that should be used before and after a measurement as per the standard. And we can pop the windsock back on. Now what we're gonna do is set the measurement up so the parameters for our testing are correct. We're gonna go down to measurement, enter, general settings, enter. The start delay, probably a good idea for quiet room, stuff like that, 30 second delay. So basically once you start the measurement, there's 30 seconds, get the room nice and quiet, shut the door, Start sync is in regards to starting on a minute or 15 minutes. We're not too concerned about that. Integration period. We are going to set this up for two minute measurements and you can press the shift and right arrow to increase the, the amount a bit faster. Below that, repetition cycles. How many cycles do you want the instrument to go through? We're just gonna be concentrating on one two minute cycle. So we're gonna scroll down. The rest you can leave as default and then press enter. Measurement trigger, that's if you want the measurement to start above a trigger level, we're not concerned about that. The profiles, so Sfan instruments can run three profiles simultaneously, like having three sound level meters. I'm gonna change this to A, filter one, and the peak filter. The detector I'm gonna to change to slow. There's a C weighting there as well, we're not gonna use that, but there's a Z, a Z profile as well, and we're gonna change that to slow, enter. After that, we're gonna go down to logging and enter. Logger setup, enter. Logger is on, logger split, you don't have to worry about. And logger step, one second. So there's gonna be one second of data through the time history file. Then we've got some logger name. This is where you can rename the files if you want. And summary results are on as well. Always enter to save the changes and, and go back as well. Logger results, these are all default. This is just what you see in the data at the end. You can change this as you please. Logger trigger is in regards to the logger starting based off a trigger level and event recording. That is if you want to record some audio, some voice notes, anything like that, that's where you can set it up. But we're not doing that for today's measurement. So we press escape, we scroll down to spectrum. This is where we need to select our parameters for the one octave max parameters for these measurements. So we're gonna go down to detector and we're gonna do it in slow. So the spectrum's gonna be A weighted, one octave bands in A slow, enter. Now we're gonna scroll down to the range and make sure that's low as well. Enter to save, scroll down, compensation filter, microphone on, and we wanna switch the windscreen on as well, which is this SA22. Outdoors off, enter to save, scrolling down. Statistical levels and timer, that's if you want the instrument to start on a certain time. And statistical levels, you guys know about those, that's where we can choose your LNs. So let's press escape, escape. We're gonna go down to display. So this is gonna be one little parameter that's gonna make the measurement easy for you. It's gonna, we're gonna select the spectrum view and instead of average, we want it to go to max. So basically we're gonna see the maximum result in those octave bands on the instrument itself. 
still in the data at the end. We're gonna have all of the instantaneous LEQ in the octave bands and the instantaneous results in the octave bands, but just on the measurement display, we just wanna see the, the max value. So after that, we're gonna press escape. We can go down to file, there's some file manager stuff, what files are in the instrument, that sort of thing if you need to go through and have a look. You know, the rest is instrument, some battery information, keyboard settings, USB, RS-232. We're not gonna go into that, I think I've done that in another video. So let's press escape. And what we wanna do now that we know that the instrument's set up for our measurement, we've done our calibration already, that's gonna go on the header info, we're just gonna press start. As you can see, there's the 30 second delay. So we're just gonna wait for that to count down and then I'm gonna show you how the displays look when it's running shortly. So once the measurement's running, you'll have a little countdown timer basically counting up how long the measurement's going for. Now all of these displays are interchangeable. So there's a few that you can see live. If you just press the down arrow, we're gonna rotate through a number of different options that you can see. We can see some live results. We can see the three profiles running simultaneously. If you wanna press right on LAEQ, we can go LAE, max, min, peak, all sorts of different things. Overall, the time of the measurement, the peak, all those sorts of different things. If we press the down arrow once more, down arrow once more, we can see our octave band. So uh, we have our L max, which is what we set up before. And along the bottom, we have our frequencies in one octave. So two kilohertz, four kilohertz, one kilohertz, 500 hertz, 250, 125, and 63. Now that the measurement has stopped, you'll see the gray square at the top. Basically, if your client is in the field or they're in the audio booth, they can manually write down the time of the file, or you can also just you know, verify yourself. You can write it on a, on a clipboard, for example, go through the octave bands. That will be for the previous measurement we just did. So they've gone in the room, taken the measurement, it was two minutes has finished. They just want to write down something also in the field or we can download it later. So as you can see, octave bands and there's your level straight there. Once your measurement's done, for example, or the day of work has been done, before and after a measurement, you should check it with an acoustic calibrator, the microphone, using common sense. If it's in the same room and you haven't moved it, I'll just do it at the beginning and the start of the day. So once we apply that level 114, the instrument's gonna register the automatic calibration for us, which is what we set up earlier. So we'll just wait for that. As you can see, it's going through its auto cal, the delay, and we'll just wait for it. New cal factor, 1.28, enter. And then the next part, I'm gonna run you through the data downloading and exporting into Excel and Svan PC++. All right, so what we're gonna do now is save the setup file to our PC and also download and export some data. So we're just gonna use the micro USB cable that comes with the instrument. It just slots into the bottom of the 971. Once you plug it into your PC, it's gonna switch on automatically. So we're just gonna wait once again for it to go through its internal warm-up. Once you have Svan PC++ opened, if you have all the right USB drivers, you will see this wizard pop up in the middle. If that doesn't pop up, then you know there's a problem with your USB driver with usually permissions to your, to your computer, which you'll need to have IT, for example, to look into. First things first, we have an update real-time clock. It'll be read here if the, if the clock is out, out based on the computer's time. First thing we're gonna do is go into the setup editor. Once this opens, we are going to want to save our setup. So as you can see, we did all of this manually on the instrument straight away, this measurement parameters. So at the top, we have a save icon. I'm just gonna press save, and I'm gonna to go to the desktop, and I'm gonna call it 971 Audio. Okay, so what we have now is a saved setup file on our desktop. You can always reload this onto the instrument, and I'm just gonna show you how to do that now. So for example, we're just gonna disconnect 971 and connect it back up again. And we're gonna have this wizard pop up once more. So for example, you've had given the instrument to a client, they've cleared all the data, you, you're worried about how to set up the same measurement setups you've always used. We open the setup editor, and this way we press the little open file up icon at the top, and we have our setup file on our desktop, 971 audio, so we just press OK, and then at the bottom we press activate setup. So that's one way if you've got multiple instruments. Yeah, if you clear all the factory resettings, it's straight there on your desktop. 
Now let's open up one of these files. So span files is the top one. What we can do is we can go to the desktop of our computer on the right hand side. This is the locally stored data on your on your PC. So let's call that 971 audio boot. Once we go into there, let's just for example make things a lot easy for yourself. Call it, you know, the 16th of the 9th. 2020 so you know on this day all of this data will be related to the measurements that you've done on that day on the left hand side we have the files that are locally stored on the instrument we can have two options of doing it we can drag one by one into different folders you'll see that none, none have been skipped or you can drag all of the new files so for example you don't clear the cache memory on the instrument you just want to drag in all the new files we can do the bottom arrow which is going to go like so and then that will take us a moment or two. Okay, so as you can see, all the files have been downloaded. You can press OK. Now, if you want to stay on top of the data and inside the instrument, we can just hit Erase Memory on the left-hand side and we'll press OK. That's going to erase all the data. You can do that on the instrument itself if you'd like to. Once that's all deleted, we're going to open up one of these files that is saved into a directory of our, on our desktop. And we're going to do some basic analysis, put it into a table format, export it to Excel with some header info. So no matter what, you guys are ready to put that into your reports. So we'll just wait a second. Okay, so once all these files are deleted, what we're going to go through is and just open up one of these files. So this is the one is the most recent. So straight away it opens up a time history graph. I've done some videos on time history. We're not too concerned about that for these sorts of measurements. But what we are concerned about is the logger one octave. So if we open up the logger one octave tab, this will pop up a new bar for us with all the one octaves along the bottom. What I can do straight away is using the table icon at the top left, we put that into table format. So as you can see, we've got the one octave LAS slow summary result 31.5 hertz 63 hertz all along there now first thing we can just select the whole table don't select one cell otherwise it's not going to um, export properly but we can select the whole table here press the export to Excel icon at the top now there's a nice little feature here it says insert header info if you press always that's going to export the header info of the measurement information straight into Excel without you having to select it. So if we open up Excel here, we just double tap these icons to make them bigger, uh, the cell, the columns to make them bigger. So if we scroll down, we've got the 971, the serial number, what firmware was used, what was the file name, the time and the date. Then we have our measurement setup. So two minute period, one cycle, 30 second delay. And this is just for you guys, some of them, some of your reports might need it. How was the calibration done? Pre-calibration by measurement and then post-calibration by measurement. That's correct. So that's already incorporated into this data. If you don't need some of this information, you know, for example, these markers, let's just delete that and you can edit this how you please. And then straight along the bottom here, we have all of our data, one octave bands and our results. So you can export that straight out, create your own spreadsheets, that sort of thing. But that's the easiest way to do it. Write down the measurement time and date and then your file's always going to be on your PC. You can always reopen it and re-export it, but that straight away is, you know, room one already done. So with the uh, calibration information as well. I hope that helps. Let me know if you've got any questions and me and my colleagues will be able to help you out. Lovely, thanks.